Hello and welcome to Deadline Northeast, the program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Skyrim Zimik and here are the top stories of today's program. National Press Day celebrated across Northeast India. Festive season brings cheer to fish farmers and traders in Manipur. And Sikkim celebrates Kukur Tihar, the festival of dogs. The National Press Day is observed on November 16 every year to celebrate the free and responsible press in India. On this day, the Press Council of India was instituted. Along with the rest of the country, the Northeast states also observe the day where members of the media fraternity share their thoughts and experiences of working during such circumstances. On November 16, 1966, the Press Council of India was instituted to check the quality of reportage provided by the Indian press. Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting Prakash Javadekar spoke on a webinar organized by the Press Council of India in the national capital. Speaking at the function, the minister said, freedom of the press is very important, but any freedom comes with the responsibility. Press ki azadi loktantra ka atma hai. Aur ye mere man pe bohot gehrai se likha gaya hai. In Manipur, the National Press Day was observed at the auditorium of the Department of Information and Public Relations. As part of the observance, the Manipur State Journalists Award was conferred to media persons of the state in eight different categories for editorials, news items and articles. This year, Sana Laipak newspaper bagged five awards in different categories. The state government has increased the cash award for the Best Editor Award on National Integration and Communal Harmony in Manipur. Like the objective of celebrating this uh, uh, praise, National Press Day is uh, to encourage uh, the local journalists to and to motivate them to uh, work to, uh, to, with quality for uh, bringing qualitative journalism in Manipur. I, I am very thankful and this is, uh, this is going to encourage the young journalists. I hope uh, the government of Manipur and DIPR keep, uh, keep on organizing such uh, functions uh, in the coming years. In Nagaland, the day was observed at Tourist Lodge Conference Hall Dimapur and at Kohima Press Club in Kohima. Senior journalists and founding members of the club highlighted the journey of journalism in the state. The members from the media fraternity shared their past experiences of reporting amid threats posed by insurgent groups. Journalism in Nagaland has been a tough job for us because we had to face many hurdles in the beginning. Today we feel that the pressure groups are still there but not as before. The freedom of speech, though it may have Develop. People are free to write, people are free to express, but we also work in certain pressure. Meanwhile in Arunachal Pradesh, the day was observed by highlighting the role of media as a watchdog of the society. We have a, a wonderful National Press Day celebrated today. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, used to organize a debate uh, competitions uh, uh, to mark uh, National Press Day, but uh, this year we celebrated with difference, uh, keeping in view the laid down SOP, and we have organized a workshop so in order to interact with uh, young journalists. The National Press Day was also held in other states, including Meghalaya and Assam. Moving on to sports, Manipur's Gyanendra Ningombam has become the first from the Northeast region who has been appointed as the president of Hockey India. Ningombam, who has several years of association with Manipur hockey, is known for his great role played in supporting talented players and the development of the sport at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. 
As hockey activities resume months after lockdown, these young hockey players in Manipur are excited to hone their skills under the guidance of the newly elected president of Hockey India, Gyanendra Ningombam. Gyanendra has been recently elected unopposed as the president of Hockey India by the governing body in the 10th Hockey India Congress and elections held in New Delhi. He replaced former president Mohammad Mushtaq Ahmed. The Hockey India Congress also discussed the roadmap towards the resumption of the hockey domestic calendar. On being selected, Gyanendra became the first president from the northeastern region to spearhead the national team. On his arrival from the national capital, a grand reception ceremony was held at the Imphal International Airport. By the wishes and by the blessings of people of Manipur in particular, I have been unanimously elected a full fledged president for the uh, term of 2022. I'm so happy and I uh, don't know how to express my feelings, you know. It's a very, very uh, power, very excitement and a very exciting thing, you know. And, uh, and to have uh, such a uh, prestigious uh, post uh, of the uh, national game hockey, uh, the, controlling body, apex body, uh, hockey in there, you know, it's a very, very uh, proud moment for me and for uh, Esther also. Gyanendra's presidency just coincides with the recent announcement by the sports ministry, which included hockey as one of the sports disciplines under the Kelo India State Centre of Excellence at Khuman Lampak. He has been serving as a sports journalist since 1990 and is still contributing articles on sports. From the Akoi Manipur massage in India, the president of the Akoi Yam Song took Sanya Wing. A Sama Sanaro Yamo in Mahanga, president of Manipur, Hena Kuma, the hot Nava, Hana, Nizer. That is no monk of Hoki, Hoki, Manipur, Sida, Hoki, Sanaro, in the Yam, the other Mahanga Sanaro, Hena Putonga, Honari was a Tagapa for the. Gyanendra has devoted his career in promoting hockey in Manipur and other states of Northeast India. He had previously been the CEO of Manipur Hockey from 2009 to 2014. To go to the height of national or international level is a very uh, difficult task. There are several uh, hurdles uh, to be crossed over, you know, and uh, in this uh, juncture, in this situation, you know, what we have to do is we have to be very much in charge, and we have to be very much uh, dedicated, and uh, also to be a disciplined body. You know. Without discipline, you know, in sports, you know, without discipline, it never goes up. You know. Expectations are high from the new president as the national men and women's hockey teams are gearing up for Tokyo Olympics 2021. With an aim to boost the COVID hit economy of the state and understanding the huge demand of fish in the market, Fish Fair Come Fish Crop Competition was recently held in Manipur. The event was held a day ahead of Ningol Chakoba. Have a look. To make Manipur self-reliant on fish production and also to promote fish farmers of the state, a fish fair come fish crop competition was recently organized at Mapal Kang Jaibong under the aegis of the Department of Fisheries. Calculating the huge demand for fish in the market, the fair was held a day ahead before Nangol Chakoba, one of the state's most celebrated festivals, particularly in the Mete community. The term Ningol means married women and Chakoba means an invitation for a feast. Even though the festival is observed originally by the Meti community, the celebration now extends to other tribes in Manipur, emphasizing the importance of reunion of a family, bringing peace and harmony in the society. Eight different species of fish, including katla, rohu, mrigal, and common carp, were sold at the fair. 
to ease the financial hardship hit by the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, the fair sold the variant fish at a 20% discount rate compared to the previous year. Because of the pandemic situation and because of the sudden close of shops and markets in the uh, bazaar area, the fishermen, the farmers especially, they cannot sell the fish before. They find a little bit difficulty. Now we are providing a platform for them to sell fish at the, uh, at the market. We are providing transport facilities for them also. We are bringing the fish by, uh, with our own exp uh, money. We, we sponsor them for bringing it. Of the total 20% discount, 10% was bore by the fishery department and the remaining was incurred by fish farmers. The average price of the fish cost around Rs 270 per kilogram and the fish production target for the fish fair was over 90,000 kilogram. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Arunachal Pradesh has recorded the highest sex ratio in the country compared to other states as per the 2018 report on vital statistics of India based on the civil registration system. The sex ratio at birth is the number of females born per thousand males. Arunachal Pradesh recorded 1,084 females born per thousand males, followed by Nagaland 965. Mizoram 964, Kerala 963, and Karnataka 957. Saffron, a high value herb traditionally cultivated in Kashmir, has found a new home in Sikkim. The possibility of its cultivation in Sikkim was explored jointly by Northeast Centre for Technology Applications and Reach and Sikkim University. The day-to-day -day monitoring of the cultivation field was carried out by an experienced farmer from Kashmir and five acres of land was used with 100 kg of saffron bulb for trial. This development gains extra significant as it is the first successful cultivation of saffron in Sikkim. Devadis in Tirpura celebrated Kali Puja by offering prayers to Goddess Kali. Crowds this year was less compared to previous years due to the pandemic. Devotees wearing masks thronged the Uma Maheshwari Temple and Anand Mai Ashram premises dedicated to Kali, the goddess of destruction in Agatla. Temples and houses were brightly illuminated on the occasion. Eleven persons dressed in army uniform but not in possession of any valid identification were arrested by Assam police near Guwahati International Airport. The persons were nabbed by police from Azara Station in Guwahati where they were moving around suspiciously near Lokapriya Gopinath Bordolai International Airport, a case under various section of IPC for impersonating army personnel, criminal conspiracy, counterfeiting government stamps, forgery has been launched and further investigation is underway. National highway projects in the Northeast are getting a boost as the government has given development a priority in the region. The four-lane National Highway executed by the National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited connecting Dimapur to Kohima is in full swing. The project is a vital artery and important highway for the people of Nagaland as it connects with Southeast Asia. A road towards prosperity and development. Ever since the foundation stone of the four-lane highway project was laid by Union Minister Nitin Gadkari, the people of Nagaland have been waiting and hoping for better road connectivity. 
the construction of the highway from Dimapur to Kohima is in full swing. The 14 km stretch from Dimapur to Patkai Bridge has recently been completed. We are very happy to see that the uh, four lane construction in Dimapur, Dimapur to Chumagdima, in fact, it is a big relief to the people residing in Dimapur and the surrounding area. The National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited is executing the project. It is scheduled to be completed in three phases. Phase 1 includes the stretch from Kushihia Bill near Purana Bazar, Dimapur to Patkai Bridge near Chumuke Dima. A stretch from Patkai Bridge to Police and Forest Check Post Kirufema under Dimapur District will be completed next. In the last phase, the highway till Kohima will be completed. Well, this should have been regulated by Nagaland State Government. Although the work orders are issued by NHIDCL, it is the within the jurisdiction of the state government. Therefore, at least it should be regulated and public convenience should be also considered. Normally, in all such a four-lane construction, good service, land, service road is conditional in work order itself. Nagaland Governor Arun Ravi has been reviewing the status and progress of construction of the National Highway Project. He has urged the contractors to expedite the ongoing works on time. The highway is taking time due to tough terrain including mountains. The centre has given priority to connect Northeast India with the rest of the country with good highways. The improvement in road connectivity will help Northeastern states to develop business connections with Southeast Asian countries including Myanmar and Thailand. As the rest of the country celebrated Diwali with lights, sparks and sparkles, Sikkim celebrated Tihar Festival, the festival to worship dogs. Have a look. In Sikkim, Diwali is celebrated under the name Tihar. The festival is celebrated with much fervor by the Nipli community of the state and other parts of the Northeast. From crows to cows, this five days long fiesta honors some of the most significant animals in Hindu mythology. To cherish the relationship between dogs and humans, the second day of the celebration is dedicated to the dogs. This day is known as Kukurtihar or Day of the Dogs. <laughs> इसका कहानी है कि प्राचीन समय में जब महाभारत में पांच पांडव में चार पांडव मर गए थे वे समय युधिष्ठिर के साथ वो स्वर्गा स्वर्ग जाने के लिए युधिष्ठिर के साथ कोई साथ नहीं था तो इसलिए कुत्ता युधिष्ठिर के साथ स्वर्ग गया था इसलिए प्राचीन काल से ये परंपरा मनाए जाता है स्ट्रीज एंड पेट्स पूजेस ऑफ ऑल काइंड्स आर शावर्ड विद फ्लावर्स adorned with garlands and tilak or gulal. After a ceremonial puja, they are treated with milk, eggs, meat and dog food. I have done और क्या बोलते मतलब ये कौन-कौन से कम्युनिटी में किया जाता है ये गोरखा कम्युनिटी में किया जाता है The festival of Tihar is celebrated in the dark half of the holy Kartik month of the Hindu calendar which usually falls somewhere between October to November On the first day of Tihar a 5-day festival the crow is worshiped On the third day it is cows in the morning and Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, in the evening. 
On the fourth day, different people worship different beings, including oxen. A child who sings is a happy child. In today's episode, let's meet a four-year-old singer from Mizoram who has won the hearts of many with a melodious voice. Her cover of A.R. Rahman's famous song, Maa Tujay Salam, has been getting her a lot of praise on social media. Esther spoke to Roving Reports via Skype. Take a look. Hi, Esther Kenya. A four-year-old Esther Namte's cover of A.R. Rahman's popular number, Ma to J Salam has caught the attention of scores of people around the globe. The cover song uploaded on October 25th from Esther's YouTube channel shows a little superstar holding the national flag and singing amid picturesque landscapes of Mizoram. Esther has gained more than 1.5 lakh subscribers in a month. Esther's rendition has been termed as the cutest version of the song. Her angelic voice has won the hearts of many, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and A.R. Rahman. Prime Minister tweeted, Adorable and admirable, proud of Esther Namte for this rendition. Her cover of Ma to Jay Salam is nearing 3.5 million views. Although she can only speak Mizo, when it comes to singing, she memorizes both English and Hindi songs very well. <laughs> Esther's mother said she started singing when she was just more than a year old and she termed it a God-given talent. Her parents recorded her first music video when she turned three. Esther says she wants to be Disney's Princess Elsa. What do you want to be when you grow up? When you grow up big like me, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? Say to say to Yeah. Speak louder. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? She wants to be Elsa. Elsa. Oh, you love Elsa. Oh, that's good. The little girl's YouTube channel, which had 73,000 subscribers when her video was uploaded, has now more than 216k subscribers. She has been awarded an appreciation letter and cash incentive by Mizoram Governor P. S. Sridharan Pillai. Though Esther is too young to comprehend all the praises and love she has been receiving, her song has united people around the globe. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ani. Like and subscribe Roving Report YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Karim Zemek, signing off. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and take care.